got this photograph of a rather dark uh, kitchen area uh, where a birthday party was taking place. Obviously, we got a happy birthday there in the middle. And <clears throat> I have this open, obviously, in Photoshop, and it's pretty dark. Uh, normally, uh, we might bring this into uh, RAW, and let's go ahead and do that. Let, um, as a filter, I'm going to go to Camera Raw Filter and move this over where you can see things. <clears throat> and we can do some nice adjusting inside of, of here. We can, you know, bring up the whites and we can certainly bring up the exposure a little bit. And we can make uh, some big time adjustments. Pants are still really dark. We've still got some dark areas here. Uh, but overall, we can make a pretty nice recovery. But let's cancel that. And <clears throat> we're going to pretend we didn't even have a camera roll. Because under image and adjustments, we've also got shadows and highlights. And once I click this, it's going to make some auto adjustments of its own. That's just the way it works. They're not usually perfect, but it gives us a starting point. So we click on that, and you see we've got this nice big uh, dialog box that I can't uh, move out of, the, out of the way or you wouldn't know what I was doing. But you can see, kabang, it uh, really brightened the image up pretty decently. I'm going to move this, uh, just turn the OK, oh, hide that part of it so I can have the rest of it up here anyway. Okay, so uh, we actually go very far in this and we start getting uh, an HDR effect out of it, but that doesn't hurt sometimes either. We can control it pretty good, but we can run this up a lot. I mean, the sky's the limit, so to speak. So uh, what I would recommend on something like this is maybe go... Uh, as far as we can in one shot and then maybe do it again but when you go to highlights not making a lot of change there but watch as we we change that and the radius is not really a, then the color can really go uh, saturated and then midtone you see what's going on midtones we can kind of clamp that down somewhere up there and then we can go back up here and and we've got a lot more light up here in this part of this person uh, obviously the the pants are black anyway but you can take it all the way and you see some of the detail now down here in the pants so what I'm saying is maybe uh, have one in this area Let's just get it tweaked uh, as good as we can get it right here. Click OK. <clears throat> now it gives us this nice layer. And I'm going to do a Control J and then go up and do it again. Image Adjustments, Shadows, Highlights. And I'm going to bring. Uh, some of that stuff up a little bit more. Now you see we're getting noise because it was so dark. Uh, we're not getting color noise, but we're getting black and white type noise in there. So we don't want to bring it back horribly far. And then maybe scooch the colors back over. Now this area is quite a bit lighter. So I would say you know here here's with that layer off see the difference in this shirt and the bag is nice blue instead of a dark dark blue so what I'm going to do is put a mask on this layer one turn on a regular paintbrush uh, if your default colors aren't black and white just press D as in Delta or dog and then white's still on top, so that's not going to do any good. I need to paint with the black. So you just press X as in X-ray. And I would 
you know, get this down around 30 or so, and you can type 30 in, or you can click on the opacity, and it turns into a sliding scrubber deal. So I'm going to have it around 30 or so. And then I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. I need a nice soft brush. And we want the hardness all the way to the left, which means it's soft. Make this a little bit bigger with my right bracket key. And then we can bring back whatever we, I actually want this to be all white. So I'm going to press X to get back to white and then take that paint back down. And I can actually fill this in because I only want to lighten or darken down a few things. I'm sorry, I want to lighten up a few things. Uh, so I can fill this mask in with black, which basically lets you see right through it to this bottom layer. So I'm going to hold down my control key and hit backspace. So I'm going to lighten up paint with white and lighten up this right here a little bit. And remember, I'm only painting with 30% so I can do that a couple of times. I can keep bringing it up as far as I want to. Let's lighten that up a little bit there. So anything like this, we want that to be make my brush bigger, right bracket key again. I want to I want this to be as white as possible. I'm going to go ahead and change this to 100% and then paint through here. See that pant leg come alive then? Get a little bit smaller, left bracket key. So now we see the creases that are actually there in the pants. Paint that shoe. Now you can actually see the colors of the shoe. I went too far. Make my brush smaller with the left bracket key. Change the color down here by pressing X as an X-ray. And we just paint that right back in. Okay. So now you see if we turn that off and on, the only two things we changed was this person's clothes and that bag. If I want to get rid of some more of that up here on the bag, I can hold down, click here, hold down my shift key, and make a straight line. Click here, hold down my shift key, shift key, so you can paint with straight lines. See, I've got 100% going now, so this is basically letting all of this area fill in with the lighter colors. And I didn't get that edge completely. Sh click and then shift click, get closer to that edge, there we go. And I can zoom in up here. And then click here. Shift click. And that's a little shadow going there. And we can go around here a little bit better. And I'm going to shift click over here. So click the eyeball off. And you can see we got a nice uh, white shirt over here. The pants do have some detail in now. And if it goes too far, there is some noise there. If it goes too far, just change the opacity and bring some of that uh, black back in again. Bring in with black so it, it hides a little bit of that. So we can kill some of that noise. That may be a little heavy. We can go down a little bit. I want to see some of that, but we don't need to see all that. And of course, this is only so noticeable because it's enlarged a lot. All right, let's go back out. Turn the eyeball off and on. See, we can still see those creases. The shirt's nice and white with the good black stripes in there. And we could make this bag uh, 
a lighter too if we paint with the mask on it as well you get the idea we can lighten up anything in here if we want to but I liked it uh, the where it was so control alt Z a couple of times command option Z on a Mac and I think we've got our image balanced out now as far as blacks and whites go not that interesting of an image but you see what we did uh, controlling it using image adjustments shadow and highlights sometimes it takes uh, more than one layer we did it layers twice with a mask but it certainly can bring, if the details are important and we want to bring it out of the shadows, remember we started with a very poor image. And maybe this technique will help you uh, save some of those images that uh, might have been tossed before when we brought them in, put them in our computers from our digital cameras and we looked at them and that's underexposed and just trashed it. Now this image, like I said, may not be all of that exciting to the overall thing that you're going for. This was just an example of one of the dark images that I had on my computer. But you may have something of great value that's very underexposed and this could be that trick that gets you out of that bind. Alright, that does it for this one.